And now, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. One of the biggest legends of the American Southwest is that of a fur trapper and prospector, Peg Leg Smith. A story of trekking across the desert, being lost in a sandstorm, and stumbling across gold nuggets covered with desert varnish, but unable to find the location years later. The story was made famous by himself, and continues today with the Peg Leg Liars contest in Borrego Springs. Countless people, whether they are professional treasure hunters or just a weekend warrior, have spent considerable money, time, and effort to locate what has become to be known as the Lost Peg Leg Mine. One thing is for sure, whether true or not, the legend has survived for almost 200 years. Thomas Long Smith was born in 1801 in Crab Orchard, Kentucky. He left Kentucky at an early age and began working for John Astor as a fur trapper along with legendary mountain men such as Kit Carson and Jim Bridger. In 1828, Smith accompanied Alexander Legrand's expedition into New Mexico as a scout, during the expedition he was shot in the right knee by an Indian. The wound and resulting infection forced the amputation of Smith's right leg below the knee, it is said that he performed the operation himself, with minor assistance by the noted Milton Sublet. He then had to use a wooden leg from which he later earned his nickname. Major Horace Bell. Noted Western Ranger. Lawyer. Author and editor of early Los Angeles, relates that he saw Peg Leg near a mother load town, lying drunk on the roadside, straddled by his half-breed son who was pounding him in an effort to arouse him from his stupor. In 1836, Smith and a party of trappers came from St. Louis to the head of the Colorado River. They followed down that stream to the mouth of the Gila River and then struck up across the desert. From Yuma their course was in a southwesterly direction, across a wide stretch of desert. They traveled for three days toward some low hills, at nightfall on the fourth day, they made their camp at the base of the southernmost part of the hills. They could faintly discern the tops of three small buttes to the north, towards a deep canyon. They were nearly out of water, so one of them was sent to explore the canyon to see if there was any water. He climbed to the top of one of the buttes, however at the top of the hill, he discovered many loose pieces of black metal. He gathered several of the pieces, having the impression that the yellow metal was copper in its native state. The trappers camped at the base of the hill that night, but they described a high mountain to the northwest. At Temecula, where the trappers first stopped, they were told the pieces of black metal found on the three buttes were gold, but the proof was not conclusive until they reached San Bernardino and submitted their find to an expert. Even then they did not realize the immensity of their discovery. Harry Oliver brought Peg Leg back to life when he formed the Peg Leg Club in 1916. A rock pile was created in the late 1940s by Desert Steve Ragsdale, who developed an appreciation for the Great Deceiver. An annual Liars contest is held at the site every April Fool's Day, when anyone can spin a five-minute long tale that Peg Leg himself could appreciate. In February of 1965, Desert Magazine published letters from a man that claims to have found the area where the gold was discovered. He even sent a few samples to the office of Desert Magazine in Palm Desert. Basically he states that he found the gold field 10 years before in 1955, and slowly went back twice a year and brought back the black gold nuggets totaling $314,650. He never stated his name as he wanted to stay anonymous, however the gold was real. Variations of this story has been told. There are different years. Was it 1829 or 1836 when Peg Leg stumbled across the gold? Was there more than one Thomas Peg Leg Smith? Was Lazarus Smith, Jedediah Smith's nephew, the real Peg Leg Smith? Was the location in the hills of the Imperial Valley, or south of Essex, by Old Woman Mountain. The legend has been told and retold. It has been embellished over the years, and taken on a life of its own. But one fact remains, Thomas L. Smith spent his final years in San Francisco, broken wandering along Montgomery Street, spinning yarns for the price of a shot of whiskey.